Hi, I'm Beth Blackerby from VioinLab.com, and in this video I'm going to show you vibrato super up close and in slow motion. I'm going to point out some don'ts as, as well as the do's, and I, what I hope um, we convey to you is that for a really warm, luscious, romantic style of vibrato, and this is the vibrato that you love to hear from soloists, this is what you recognize as, as a gorgeous vibrato, and that that the, that the range of motion is very large, that the amplitude is big, and that that's what you work for. It's easy to scale that back to play Baroque music or classical music, but you want to be able to have that really, really audible, warm, luscious vibrato for playing, for playing romantic style of music. So I'm talking about this kind of vibrato. Okay, so we're going to start. We're going to start with the first finger, and we're going to do the different fingers, um, different speeds. So hopefully, you'll get to you'll get a lot from this video. So this side shot gives a nice view of that first knuckle joint, and you can see how flexible it is. And this is something that's too difficult to see with your own hand while you're playing. In the slow motion clip on the left, you can see just how relaxed and flattened the knuckle is when the hand rocks back to the far side of the pad of the fingertip. Here's a closer view of the first finger. Now there's no audio because the camera doesn't capture audio when the slow motion feature is enabled, but that's good. It gives you the opportunity just to focus on, on the movement. In this next clip, I want you to see a don't. And I see this frequently with students who, who grasp the neck, who maintain contact between the inside of the hand and the neck of the instrument. And this completely restricts the, the movement of the vibrato, almost precluding a vibrato motion with the finger. So this is what happens. And, and you can barely, barely detect a vibrato. Notice how restricted the motion is. The inside of the hand is hugging to the neck, which, which anchors the hand and doesn't allow the knuckle to move. In this next slow motion clip, I, I release the hand, and the hand comes unglued, and it's able to sweep back and forth alongside the neck, and then the knuckle is able to bend, and then you have a nice uh, audible vibrato. And again, see that really wide range of motion with the second finger. In the learning stages, it's easier to do vibrato with the second finger than the first finger. The hand is more balanced with the second finger acting as a fulcrum at the, at the center of the hand, and then the hand swings back and forth around that center. And along the same lines as the previous don't, um, I see a sort of a compensation when students, again, are maintaining this contact. And I see the wrist moving back and forth. So I, this, is, this is pretty common. And, and the, the person thinks that they're doing a vibrato. It feels like a vibrato because the wrist is moving, but it's moving in the wrong way. First of all, the hand isn't moving back and forth this way. So when this is locked and then this is moving, really essentially nothing, again, nothing is happening with the finger, and I can't really demonstrate th this very well, but it's amazing how fast someone can, can vibrate like this. So really, the hand pivots back and forth on top of the forearm in this way. So, so you can see this in slow motion. In this clip, I'm hugging the neck with the hand and only moving the wrist, so you can see how this is just a wasted effort and that the finger itself is not being affected. Like the second finger, third finger is an easier finger for vibrato in the beginning stages of learning. For one, the joint at the end of the finger, or that, that first knuckle, already approaches the string at a more relaxed angle. And you can see that in the slow motion clip. You can see that that, that sort of that angle has a, has a built-in flexibility. I want to 
point out something about the thumb, and I hope that you can see this in, in these close-ups, um, and that is that when the thumb is relaxed, okay, there's not a lot of tension in the thumb, the skin of the thumb is, is able to move, and it moves, and we, when we have a, a wide vibrato, it's gonna pull and push, it's gonna tug on the thumb. The thumb doesn't move, it doesn't um, release its contact, with the neck, but yet the skin has a lot of a lot of mobility. So when the thumb is too tight, then it prevents that movement, and it also makes the violin move. So I get a lot of emails saying that when I do vibrato, my violin moves back and forth, and that's because if there's just too much tension, it's going to pull and tug the violin instead of just allowing for the skin to be that layer in between the thumb and the violin. So this, this sort of absorbs the motion and it moves, moves very freely. So I hope you can see that. So taking a closer look at the thumb, you can actually see a little movement in that base joint where the thumb joins the hand, um, which of course is, is gonna allow for a broader hand motion. So you can see that if the thumb is squeezing the neck, then that joint will, will lock too and that will in turn inhibit, inhibit the motion of the vibrato. And now hopefully you can see that little give of the skin against the neck, right at the, at the pad of the tip of the thumb. And here it is from a different angle. So that wiggling is a byproduct of the force of the vibrato motion, but it's, it's so important in preventing the violin from moving and from being tugged. So here is a, is a vibrato that I would classify as too tight, when there's just not enough flexibility in, in that first joint. So sometimes it can get very fast and it's narrow. In this clip, notice the stiffness of the first knuckle and how restricted the movement is. And this kind of vibrato, it comes off sounding narrow and tight and, and a little dull. If the finger itself is just pressing too hard on the string and with too much pressure then it sort of it locks this this first knuckle and I get a lot of emails saying I just don't have the flexibility in my knuckles and unless you have joint problems unless you have arthritis you can move this this joint just do this with your finger I can do this with the other hand I've never done vibrato with my right hand but yet my joints move just fine. So the problem is, is that when there's just too much pressure and, and underneath the finger is too tight, it keeps the, the, the um, knuckle from bending. So finding that magic combination, enough pressure to keep the string down, a, a light amount of pressure enough that the, the, the knuckle will still bend. So just sort of experiment with this and you can see how you can still have tension, you can still have tensile strength in, in the finger, but yet the, 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 the knuckle still can be flexi flexible and move back and forth. Now for most people, using vibrato on the fourth finger is the hardest. And for one, the finger is naturally weaker, the hand is less balanced, and, and as it's the shortest finger and the furthest away, um, and especially you know for those with short hands like myself, that big stretch, it, it takes up all the slack and there's not a leeway, not a lot of leeway for, for movement. Now I'm gonna freeze the shot and notice the angle of the finger to the string. It's, it's almost perpendicular. And you can see with this still shot of the string indentions on my fingertips that the string intersects the fourth finger almost closer to the horizontal axis than the diagonal. And now if you look closely at the fingertip, notice a slight circular motion and the finger is sort of massaging the string in a circular fashion. At the beginning of this video I played the opening of the Brook Violin Concerto and in, in this example we use a, a very large vibrato and, and in all these um, slow motion examples I'm using a vibrato that's appropriate for a forte dynamic. We need that kind of amplitude to project the sound. So I've been, I've been using this style or this, um, this particular speed. <laughs> we don't always play forte. Even in romantic pieces, we play at softer dynamics. So in this case, we need to narrow the vibrato a little bit or else it just sounds over the top. So if I 
um, and this is a famous example, I always use this, if I start the opening of the meditation from Thais with a big, large vibrato, it's just too much. It sounds a little, a little cartoonish. So I, I narrow the vibrato a little bit. It's still relaxed, still very flexible. And then we can vary the width of the vibrato as we sculpt our phrases, as we add crescendos and decrescendos. So as we get louder, as we make a crescendo, we can widen the vibrato. And back to piano, becomes more narrow. And I'm going to crescendo here. And then I made my vibrato wider to help um, in just rich and rich, give richness to the sound. So in this next example, you'll see um, a, a narrow vibrato getting wider. And you can hear the difference in dynamic. So soft dynamic, regular speed. And here comes the louder dynamic. The hand gets wider. So you can really see the amplitude difference between the piano vibrato and the forte vibrato. It's quite a bit. Now I want to bring up a continuous vibrato. As classical musicians, we want to try and keep the vibrato motion going all the time. Um, even, even in fast note values, when it, you think you don't have enough time to, to vibrate on, on each individual note, it's still, once we have this motor going, we can still change fingers. And this is called continuous vibrato. Now the question is, is it really continuous? And I think you'll see in the footage the answer to the, this question. It's very interesting. is continuous. However, what you'll see is that we can't multitask with vibrato and finger action. And you can see that there's a split second where the vibrato stops when we place the finger down and then likewise when we lift the finger up. In this last clip, I want to show you vibrato in, in higher positions, and, and there's really nothing different about doing vibrato in, in higher positions. It's the same motion, it's just the angle of the wrist is changed. So this is normal, this is high. So we have to bring our hand around, we have to get around the shoulder of the instrument. That creates this bend in the wrist, but we still have we still have flexibility in the joint, we still have freedom of motion, and it's important that the thumb, that we bring our thumb down and around, and when we do that, it elevates the hand. When the hand is elevated and the wrist comes, and the elbow comes around, then we create enough room and enough space to have this nice vibrato, so. So if I bring my thumb back and just reach with my fingers, that puts my hand against the shoulder, and then I'm not able to really have a nice amount of, of movement and freedom of motion there. So just remember that. Remember, try to create as much space as you can to get to keep that, that same vibrato in, in the higher positions. I hope that in general you've learned um, from this video that just freedom of movement is, is the most crucial ingredient for developing a good vibrato motion. I well, hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you got to see things that you wouldn't normally be able to see from the vantage point of, of playing. And um, check out violinlab.com. I have scads more videos there than here on YouTube. Other free videos that aren't posted here as well. The, the price for joining is cheap. I made it cheap so that no one would be deterred. So, so appreciate your visit um, to violinlab.com.